Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be doing something new. We're not going to be solving an actual problem, but we're going to be going over an advanced DSA topic that's actually reasonably common in DP problems. And we're going to start with space optimized bottom up dynamic programming. And what we're going to do is we are going to go through an example first that has nothing to do with dynamic programming just to get some intuition for it. So let's say you have a matrix and you have the bottom row filled up. And the way you want to fill up this matrix is for each row, the value of the cell is value of cell below it plus one. So start out something really easy, right? So basically, like for this cell, the value is just this plus one. So this is pretty easy to fill out, right? So we could fill it out like this would be like one, two, three, and this is four, three, two. So notice that each cell relies on the one below it. So while this was fast to fill out, imagine if our matrix had a million rows, right? So it has a million rows and each cell only depends on the one below it. And instead of asking to fill out the entire matrix, what if we are asked to just return the top row? right, of a matrix of a million rows. We could just make this matrix and fill it out, but then what would our dimensions be? So let's say our columns is three and our rows is a million, our dimensions would be a million times three. So basically a million, right? Is there any way you could do this like while saving space? And there is a way you could do this while saving space. And the intuition is basically because each row only depends on the one below it, when we're on this row, we're never going to be getting values from any row other than the one below it, right? So all we really need to do is store in memory the old row that we had and the current row. Now you can do this in place, but I'm actually going to discourage from doing this in place. Well, obviously in place, you can just take a row and you can just like for, you know, n to one to a million, you can add to it. But the concept of this is it's, it's a lot easier with two rows for a standard practice for harder problems, because for harder problems, you won't just be asked to add one, you'll, ask, you'll be asked to do a lot of things, and your row might might uh, also um, depend on some other stuff. So we're gonna show how to do this with two rows, and this is gonna be like something that you can basically apply to all space optimized. So that's why I wanted to do it not in place. Okay, so the basic pattern is you take this row, so let's call this like DP, for example, and it's we're going to have it 0, 1, 2. And basically for every single time you make a new row, right, in a for loop, you just make a new DP, initialize all the values with 0, 0, 0, and then you loop. So it would be something like pseudocode would be something like here, our, we initialize our DP, and then we say like for row in rows, you know, going up, you initialize a new DP. And then for column in columns, you would get these values of the new DP. So it'd be like new DP at column equals old DP or DP at column, something like this, right? Uh, plus one. And then finally, at the very end, you just take your DP. So you say DP equals new DP. And essentially what you are doing, let's kind of walk through this, uh, like what this would look like, right? So our original um, DP is this, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2. And our new DP, let's call that N, we're going to initialize it to so just be all zeros. And we're basically going to say, okay, so this new DP represents this row here for now, right? And we're going to say, okay, let's go through every column and let's make new DP the old DP plus one. So this would be, we can just um, take these values. So we can say like, this is one, this is two, this is three. Then we will say, okay, now, now that we have this filled out, now we're going to make our old DP equal to this. So now we will say DP is equal to this as well. Then we go up the next row and now we are trying to fill out a new row. So once again, we need to make a new DP that's all empty. So now DP is equal to this, actually. It's not equal to this anymore. So this is gone. And now our new DP 
equals this, right? Zero, zero, zero. And then we do the same thing. We say, okay, let's say for every new DP value, let's take the old one and add one. So it would be two, three, four. And notice how we did this with two rows. And while this didn't save us much in a three by three matrix, if this matrix was a million by three, we would only have two rows. So like I said, you can do it in place, but I would honestly say if your space is one row or two rows, it's the same exact space, right? It's like two times the row instead of row. So it's basically the same. So this is a lot easier just always using two rows. So that is one like way you could do it or not. Th that is the way you should do it actually. So now let's go through a slightly tougher example. And this one is also common. So let's delete all this. Now let's say that our, we kind of have, we're going to have kind of like a similar thing we need to do, but it's going to have a slight twist. So now for every, like this, this is still filled out, but now for every row going up, the row depends on this value plus this value. Right. And if the right value is out of bounds, then we can just say it's zero. So how would we do this? Well, we don't want to fill it out left to right because like here, this value depends on this value and this value. So we have to structure our loop. So we fill right to left, right? So we want to fill right to left. So just to show the matrix, this would be like two, then this would be one plus two. So three, three, then this would be, uh, did I do it correctly? No, I didn't. Actually, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. So this would be two. Um, yeah, this is correct. Five and eight. All right. So we're not just adding one. We're basically adding the one below it and the one to the right. So that should all be correct because yeah, this is fine. The, the, the rightmost or column should be two because there's nothing to add here. So it basically goes up same value. And then all of these values are the value to the right and the value below it. So once again, how do we do this using our space optimization? And so we can do the same kind of thing where we can have DP equal to this. So we'll say DP equals, we'll write our stuff in. So zero, one, two, then we have new DP equals, we'll just make it all zeros again. And now it's going to be kind of similar, right? Except now we're going to be filling out our new DP from right to left. So let's just make some space. It's all zeros. So the first value is going to be DP two and there's nothing to the right. So it's just going to be two. Then the second value is going to be DP of one plus new DP to the right, right? So basically the value to the right is going to be in new DP. We can actually even draw it. So the like this value is two, this value is going to depend on here and here, right? So that those are the two we add. So we'll say like, let's add DP at the same index and let's add new DP at the index after. So we will get three there. And then this value will depend on DP at the same index and new DP at the index after. So we should get three there as well, right? And that is correct. So we would get like three, three, two. Then finally we make DP equal to this new DP again. And this is basically gone now. So then we need to loop one more time for this top row. So once again, we'll make a new DP. So N, we'll make it all empty to represent zeros, but imagine these are all zeros. And same thing, we're gonna fill out right to left. So we're gonna say, okay, for this right one, there is nothing to the right, but there is a value below it. So the value at the same index will be two. Then this one depends on the one below it and the one to the right. So we have access to both of those. So that's five. And this one also depends on the one below it and the one to the right. So that's eight. And finally we make DP equal to it at the end. So this DP is gone. Once again, we use two rows to do this, right? So here we go. So we got this top row. Once again, we're not saving a lot with three by three, but once again, if it was a, I keep saying once again, so sorry about that. Uh, if this was a million rows, then we would save a ton. And so that's kind of the premise behind space optimized dynamic programming as well, is you basically look at where do my actual, where am I going in my DP? So let's say I do have this like DP matrix, which usually, so this is going to be applicable to a two, two by two DP or like a three by three DP or something like that, or not, I guess not two by two, but, um, two dimensional DP or uh, three dimensional DP or things like that. You look, where do your dimensions actually need to go? 
right? And so th this might this might represent something like you know row and column in a matrix or number of coins or whatever or index. Index is very common, right? So if if your index, for example, if your index in your recursive case or your DP only checks only goes to the next index, right? It only goes to the next one, then that's a dimension that can be space optimized. Now let's talk. Let's talk about. So this is this is how you can apply it to bottom up. Um, you basically get a bottom up, and you say like, okay, where are my dimensions going, and how far are they going? And if they only go one down or one across or something, those are dimensions we can space optimize. Now let's talk about some tricks. So for in one thing, how do we change this if instead of each dimension relying on the one, or let's say we're trying to space optimize some dimension, like, and this dimension relies on the one below it. So we talked about how we could do that with these two rows. What if it the dimension relies on two below it, right? Like what if maybe I'm traveling to like index plus one and then index plus two or so on. Or I'm just traveling or general case, right? Where I'm traveling index plus K where K is pretty small, right? Like I can travel to any one of these. I can travel one down, two down, three down, so on. Well, in that case, so if your matrix, for example, if you're going two down, what you could do is because every single row depends on the one below it and the next one, now instead of storing two rows, you just store three rows. So pretty straightforward. The way you would do it is you would do something like this. So you would say you would you would be storing uh, three rows. So you could store let's say a three by three, and let's just show like so. Let's actually uh, let's actually go back to our easy example here of just the one below it plus one. Obviously, like I said, you can do that in place, but the whole point of this is it's not gonna be as easy, so it's better not to. So let's say every value is just the one, let's say, let's say it's actually, every value depends on the one below it and the one two below it. And if it's out of bounds, then just the one below it. So we'll say this is like uh, two, one, zero. And now here, this will depend on the one below it and the one two below, right? So zero plus zero, zero, one plus one is two, two plus two is four. And so on. So for this row, for example, this would, if we added another row, this would depend on the one below it and the one two below it. So we add them together, zero, three, six. Now we don't want to keep, we don't want to like store this entire matrix, right? So when we, when we take this row, what we can do, one, one thing we can do is something like this. We could store a actual 2D uh, array, but now instead of maybe we can use something like a Q. Right. So what we could do is we could store a queue with rows and columns. And then what we can do is every time we will be appending to the left. Right. So we'll be appending rows to the left. And then every time our queue is too big and we don't need this next thing, then we'll just pop it from the right. So what that's going to look like is we'll have a queue that's going to start out, let's say, uh, with just this one row. And then we'll keep appending rows. So let's see what that would look like. Uh, let's get rid of all of this and kind of walk through that. So let's say our queue initially is just, so it's going to be two dimensional and it's going to have this like bottom row in it, right? So zero, one, two. And let's say once again, million rows, we'll just show how to do the first couple of them. So we, we did this. Now we're going to be adding rows above. So we'll, we'll be appending to the, um, left. So every time we add a row, we can just add it with zero values, right? So add zero, zero, zero. And then this row is going to depend on the two rows below it. So there are no two rows below. It, there's only one. So we'll just say like, it's going to be just the same value as this because there is no, like I said, if there are no values below it, we'll just say like, these are in like zero or something. So now let's try to add one more row. And remember, every row depends on two rows below it. So you're going to need to, at maximum, store only three rows. And once again, let's say, uh, let's say at the very end, we're just asked to return like our topmost row, right? If we're asked to return their entire matrix, obviously we have to store it, but that's not usually the case. Okay, so let's add one more row. So we'll add another another row. Now it's going to depend on the two rows below it. So we have zero plus zero, which is zero. We have one plus one, which is two. And now we have four. Okay. Now, notice that if we try to add one more row, th this next row is only going to depend on these two. So what we can do is we can say, okay, we're never going to need this again. So let's just pop that one. And then let's add another row over here. And we can do something like that, right? Where I I've honestly, I, I don't think I've seen this uh, in, in LeetCode ever. 
But this makes like total sense to me. So I think this is totally uh, because I haven't like space optimized um, dynamic programming where you're storing multiple rows is not super common. I've seen like two problems, but just something to keep in mind that you could do this if you did need to keep like 10 rows or something. Right. Keeping 10 rows when you need a million is still way better because 10 rows rounds to O of one. So this is basically the same thing. And in fact, you can actually do this. If you want to do this queue for two rows, you could totally do that, right? You can just add, when you, when you want two rows, you just add another row, you fill out all its values, and then you pop the right row. And that could be like a generic use case for uh, this as well. Instead of doing the two rows and making them equal to each other, just use a queue, totally fine. So let's go through this. So this will be zero, three, six, right? So we filled out a row. And then if we want, let's do like one more. So if we want to do one more, once again, we know that, that this new one will only rely on the two below it. So we can pop this and we'll add another row of zero, zero, zero. And then th this left one will be zero. This right one will be five. This will be 10. And you can just keep doing this, keep doing this. Just, just calculate how many times you need it to actually get the topmost row. So if you need a million, do a million or whatever. But notice your queue will only hold three rows instead of a million. So you're saving a ton of space. So that is one uh, that is one like kind of like pretty advanced optimization. Normally you will just be you will just be it'll be a lot easier because a row will only depend on the one below it or or to the right. Now the other one is if you can optimize both dimensions. So something like um, let's say this is pretty common. Let's say your DP has two dimensions like i and j, and when you recurse or in your DP you're recursing to like i plus one or j plus one, right? So your row only depends on the one below it and your column only depends on the one to the right, let's say. So if both of your dimensions are able to be space optimized, and this happens a lot as well where, um, where you can actually flip your dimension. So for example, for something like, something like where you could traverse and you're starting a cell and at a cell and you can go like, right or down or something like that. This is really common. You can move in like two directions. So this matrix can actually be like, if this was an M by N matrix, it would give you the same exact solution as an N, as an M by N matrix this way. Like, so if you could optimize both dimensions and you could swap the dimensions, then you could do a, a even bigger optimization where you could say, okay, well, because I need to, because when I optimize a dimension, I basically get rid of it in my DP, right? So if I optimize this dimension, then then my DP is going to have like N cells in it, where if I optimize the other way, like if I get rid of this dimension, then my DP will have M cells in it. So when you are storing it, you want to pick so that your DP is actually storing the smaller number. So there's two ways to do this, but honestly, the easiest way to do it is knowing if the order of these don't, don't matter, like if DP of M and N equals DP of N and M, right? If you could swap these and the, and the result will be the same, then what you could do is you could just figure out like, which one do I actually want to use in my DP to hold the array, whichever one is smaller. And then you could do that, right? So if your DP is like zero times M, and it's kind of confusing, but we'll, um, kind of show it. So if this is the case and M is bigger than N, then you might want to like, let, let's say you're optimizing to get rid of the row, right? You're optimizing to get rid of the row. So you are, so you're going to hold your columns in here, let's say. Uh, so this would actually be like this. This is pretty common, right? You get rid of the row and then your call, your DP is like columns where, well, if columns is bigger than rows, then you're going to want to use this one because you, you're actually gonna to wanna to do this, right? You're gonna to wanna to do O of M. So, so if you can't optimize either one, then you do want to make sure you optimize the one that will keep your data structure to hold the DP the smallest. So just get rid of the dimension that's bigger and then hold the smaller one in your DP. So that's the final one. It, and then, and then your, your space complexity here will be min of M and N instead of, instead of like just strictly one of them, right? Because it, it, this is better than like O of N if N is bigger than M. Right. So if n is bigger than m, then you want to use the min. Otherwise, you know, use the other one. Kind of complicated. That one's not too important, honestly, if you don't get it. Um, it's not super useful. This is the main one that saves a lot of space where you take two dimensions and you turn it into one.
So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few problems and we're not even going to look at like, we're not even going to like really read the problem. We're just going to glance at the solutions and see the pattern for space optimizing. And we're going to space optimizing without even knowing really how the solution works because you don't really need, to, you don't really care. So let's take a look at some of those. So we're going to look at unique paths. We're not even going to read it. We're going to look at the editorial and we're going to look at some solutions. So here they have a recursive solution. So notice it uses M by N here. And the recursive solution goes m minus one or n minus one. So notice m only goes down one and n only goes down one. So this would be a case where uh, m and n could be space optimized, right? Either one. So this is one where let's actually just take, let's look at the bottom up. So they have a bottom up solution. Let's actually even copy it, put it in here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, without knowing exactly how this works, we're just going to briefly glance over it and try to get rid of dimension. We know from this recursive solution that M and N can both be space optimized because they only move one at a time, right? So what we're going to do, so typically what you want to do is, this is typical bottom up format where you make some column and then you extend it, you make it like M times, right? So this is the, N is the column and M is the row. So we're going to get rid of the row. So instead of making a 2D matrix, we're going to get rid of one dimension. So we're going to get rid of this M dimension and we're just going to have this one, uh, this one times N thing. Now the actual bottom up for loops stay exactly the same, but now we need to figure out like, how do we actually do this new thing? So this N, so you could think of the N being the column and the M being the row. So essentially our DP is going to be length of the column. So for every new row, we have to make a new, uh, we have to make a new DP here. Um, I think what we're going to do actually, because for every new row, we have to make a new DP. I think we're probably going to swap these around. Oh, actually, no, 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 sorry. So, so they, they did it kind of weirdly. So here their column is actually M and the row is N. So actually this is fine. Um, this is actually, for every new, uh, for every new column, we have to, we're making a new row, right? So it's kind of weird, but for every new column, they're making a new row. So we can get rid of, we can get rid of some stuff. So essentially, the format once again is going to be if we look at our old picture. I don't know if I have it saved anymore. Uh, I don't think I do. But essentially, the boilerplate is for every new column, we're making this, right? And then this is going to be this DP is going to be for the row. So like if we're at this column we're going to make uh, this whole row. And then if we're at this column, we're going to make this whole row. If we're at this column, we're going to make this whole row and so on. Kind of weird. I don't know why they chose to do it like that, but it'll still work. So here we need to make a new DP. And we're going to say this is going to be, uh, so it looks like they initialized, if we go back to the code here, it looks like they initialized every single one to one times n. So this is like the starting, this is what the starting value should be. So that's what we're going to make it. So we're going to say new DP is going to be one times n. And then let's try to figure out what these things should be. So we no longer have a column, right? Like n is row in this case. So we can write that down. Kind of weird. So n is row, m is column. You can tell from this uh, loop, right? Column is m and row is n. Okay, so we no longer have a column. So when it says D row, D column row, this is just new DP, right? We're taking the new DP value. Now we need to really figure out these. So D column minus one means we are going down a column or we're going up a column. But since we no longer have columns, this basically means this is the, this is the old DP. So this is like D and this one is at the same column, which means this is the new DP since we're optimizing for the column. So this is going to be new DP row minus one. And finally, uh, we need to do one more thing. Remember at the end of the for loop, we need to say DP equals new DP. And if this is kind of confusing, I would just encourage you to take some bottom up solutions that you've written yourself and figure out how you could space optimize them. Because basically, yeah, you should be able to basically take a solution that's from leak code, not even know what it does and recognize how far you're going and then be able to space optimize it. Okay. And so here, um, this is the column. So we no longer have a column, right? We just have one column. And then this is the row, which we have. 
So let's test it. Again, let this work. And you can see, uh, as far as efficiency, th that's not important. Um, like it's going to depend on the test. Like sometimes I've written a space optimized bottom up DP that somehow takes up more space than uh, than the non space optimized because that's just the way the tests are ran. But yeah, essentially to summarize this one, we got rid of the column dimension. So we you want to look at like how this is made. You want to make it every time, and then you want to you want to basically all the you notice like all the rest of our code is pretty much the same. We just got rid of the column dimension, and anytime they asked us to go to a new column, we went to DP, and anytime they asked us to stay at the same column, that was from new DP. And then finally, we make D equals new DP, and then we return. Okay, um, let's look at one more. So let's look at coin change, and is there anything else I wanted to mention on this one? I don't think so. Oh yeah, the other thing is, notice how like these loops are pretty much the same, and this is going to be pretty common. The rest of your code is almost all the same. You just change your second dimension into a new DP and DP. And that's basically it. So it's very similar once you have a bottom solution to go to space optimized. Okay, let's go to, oh yeah. So there, there's one more thing I wanted to mention. So notice we are space optimizing for, uh, for getting rid of the column, right? So if, so we're getting rid of the column and we're making our, our, our answer length of N. Well, what if, what if N is bigger than M? Then we want to swap it, right? And I know from doing unique paths myself that um, swapping doesn't matter. Now, you don't you don't always know that, so you would actually have to like look at the problem and figure out that like swapping the dimension doesn't matter. So I do know that here swapping doesn't matter. So if I if I called unique paths M N or unique paths N M, it doesn't matter. So if you do know that, then you can simply say something like this, and you, you would know that by actually like doing the problem. I don't think you could do that from um, oh well, maybe you can, but it's like pretty hard to figure that out just by looking at a solution. Besides, regardless, you're going to be like building these up yourself anyway. But let's say I knew that this was equal, right? So unique paths uh, MN is equal to unique paths M or N. And, and the dimension we're getting rid of is M because our DP is length N. So it's fine for our DP to be length N, but what if N is like a million and M is three? then we'd want our DP to be length M, right? So we can handle that. So we can say if N is greater than M, then let's just return the other way around, right? So instead, let's return this way. So if uh, N is greater than, yeah, I think this should be correct. So if N is greater, then we will get rid of N and we will use this. And I believe that is correct. So we can run that, and like like uh, once again, I don't think this matters too much, but this in theory is going to be better because yeah, we can. Um, uh, I don't I don't actually no, we can't we can't like run a test case because it won't give us this space. But yeah, uh, th this is fine. This is like once again like it goes from like six percent to eighty percent. But yeah, so that is like the other uh, space optimization is if you're if you can swap them, then you should always just pick the minimum one. Okay. So now let's go to the second one and let's look at the solution. So here we have, I'm not sure yet. here we go. Okay, so it looks like we have an amount and we have an i, and let's look how far these go. So i goes to i plus one, and amount goes to amount minus coins i. So co so I think coins can be like anything. So amount can go, can get real, like can move a lot, but I can only go one, right? Like the recursive cases, the index is, and this is very common, like I said, you're gonna have an index and some other value and the index can only travel one. So this is where you can space optimize the index, but you can't space optimize them now. So let's take a look at uh, the bottom up, copy it in again, and let's take a look how we can space optimize. So it looks like we're making an array of length amount for every single row in range n plus one, where n is n is the index, right? Uh, let's just make sure that's correct. So i, yeah, i is the the n here, or like i is this this thing here, um, and 
Yeah, see, so i gets incremented to i plus 1, while j is the amount, and the amount gets incremented a lot. So we're going to space optimize to get rid of i here. So once again, we're just going to get rid of this for loop. And then they say dpi 0 needs to be 1, so we're going to keep that in mind. So once again, we don't need a for loop because we only have one row here. And we're going to keep every, we're going to keep both for loops the same. So now for every single, because we got rid of the I dimension, we got rid of the row dimension. Now the same kind of format, right? For every row, we need to make a new DP. So new DP. And it's going to be the length of the column because we got rid of the row dimension. So this is going to be literally same code as this. And we also need to make new DP, uh, so this actually, we don't have an I anymore. So this needs to be new DP of zero needs to equal one, right? Every single new DP, every single row has the, these two things. So new DP of zero. Okay. And so now we, we can do the same thing. We can look, remember we don't have an I dimension anymore. So DP I doesn't exist. So it's just new DP. Same thing here. And then anytime i gets incremented, that means we are looking at the old dp. And anytime i is the same, we are looking at the new dp. So this is the old dp. This is the old dp. And this i is the same. So this is the new dp. And that's basically how you know, because we got rid of the row dimension. If it's the same row, that means it's in the row of our new dp. And if it's the other row, then it's the row of our old dp. And finally, we need to say dp equals new dp. And now remember, we don't have a dimension. Uh, we don't have a row dimension. We only have columns. So let's try that. Uh, new dp. Let's see, int is not subscriptable. All right. So, so when the um, when the row is different, it's the old dp. But remember, we don't have the row, so it's just the old dp. We don't have a row here. Same thing here. There we go. Definitely kind of confusing. Um, so if so, if you weren't able to follow this part where you just go straight from um, this to your optimal solution, that's totally fine. Just code up your own and try to space optimize it yourself from this earlier part that I did. Because once you like, if you haven't done it um, a few times, it's gonna it's it's gonna take a while. Like this is probably uh, I'd say like if a if a problem takes let's say forty five minutes, the memoization part takes like ten minutes. The getting a bottom up solution takes like 15 minutes or even honestly, memorization can even take less. Memorization can take like five minutes or eight minutes or something. Getting a bottom up solution that's working is going to take like 20 and then getting it to be space optimized will be another 10 to 20, especially if you haven't done enough of them. Like you kind of just have to do enough of them to, to get the pattern. But so hopefully that was helpful for you. And then I'm just going to link this video when I do um, DP because this is very common where like, and I think they might even have it in here. Let's take a look. Yeah, so they have these approaches, dynamic programming with space optimization, where the old one was n times amount, and this was uh, amount. And this is very, very common. Um, so they have they have a lot of these in the editorial, but they're kind of confusing. So I just thought I'd give you like a general a general case of what, what to look for and how to do it. So hopefully that was helpful. And if it was, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll probably make a few more of these for advanced topics in the future. So thanks for watching.